Hey guys, and welcome back to the One Man Show, the number one and only fight podcast in Singapore. <laughs> I am the man. Over there is the one over there. <laughs> and today we actually have a very good looking, pleasant guest who also <laughs> shares uh, similar traits to our one and only Ridwan here. Welcome to the show. No, no, hi, la. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for getting on the show. We're so sorry for all the technical gremlins that we have uh, before that. Uh, how are you? How's, how's Hi Raya for you? Uh, it's a bit uh, dull, I would say, but it's okay. The circuit breaker and phase one now has been giving me a lot of space, I would say. You need space from who? <laughs> people so crowding over people. the supermarket. <laughs> Is it because because a lot of people talk about your teeth and your shins? That's why you need space. <laughs> hey, everybody out like there, <laughs> do not be mean to her. She is Singapore's world sea light champion. Do not talk about her teeth. Do not talk about her skin. Because if you talk about her chin, she'll put your she'll put her leg onto your face. Imagine you don't have the right to talk about this because you'll keep making my noise, my news. <laughs> you have no right to advise people on this. Yeah, but you firstly, one, you're not that good looking. Secondly, uh, you do not have thirty thousand followers on Instagram, so I can do whatever I want to <laughs> about your so news. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, obviously. We are a fight podcast, right? Uh, so, Ayla, you are also a fighter. You are a world champion in Silat. Uh, I think a lot of questions about how you start and how you begin have been asked. I just want to ask you some other questions which people have not asked. The first and foremost <laughs> is the most important one to me because, you know, this is the first time I'm having someone from Silat also on my podcast. Uh, do you still get people asking you, like, Sila got fight one man. Sila not like dancing one man. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. They think it's like Tai Chi or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, how, how should I say this? Um, usually I'll just say like, oh no, I'm in combat Sila. So I guess like the word combat just goes yeah, to the point. Yeah, I'll just say combat Sila. Well, I mean... You must have, I mean, a lot of people will probably say like, girl, most likely go for the artistic one, right? Like, do you <laughs> need to tell them like, do you, do you want to see me punch your face or kick your face? Oh my God. No, <laughs> I'll just tell them like, I'm very stiff to be in artistic and I enjoy like sparring better, so... Yeah, we don't also get stiff sometimes, but that's from other stuff, right? Right. <laughs> You would know. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah, we're going there already. Um, for those of you who just joined us, uh, we've been having, we've been the three of us have been talking for more than half an hour because we're having technical problems. So we, uh, this podcast might actually be uh a bit more far along than usual because we've already warmed up quite well. Now, so I like you are a world champ, and uh, you are also. You also have something in common with Red One. Uh, both of you are three times Sea Games bronze medalists. <laughs> Better than zero. And how does we it, are proud of it. How does it? How does it feel to actually know that there's someone out there in Singapore who is sharing that same accolade as you? <laughs> Feels great. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> But this is your like, I third, understand, you know? This is your third world championship, right? That you won the... This is my fourth one, actually. Fourth? Oh my god. My fourth world championship. <sighs> the so first one, I, I... I got a bronze. Mm. Second one, I got a silver. Third one, I got... I went down to a bronze again. And then the fourth <laughs> one, I went to a gold. Yeah. So, do you know, like, in your head, in your heart, that you're going to win... For the, for the for the fourth time and during I mean the fourth actually, attempt yeah actually, can you see yourself winning before you actually go out there to win, to fight because like um of course when I heard that it's gonna be in my country like the drive is so I guess so different from competing overseas and I knew that like 
um, because okay, there is this opponent uh, from Indonesia that I've lost to like three times. Mm-hmm. But uh, before the World Championships, I finally won her at uh, Belgium Open. And I knew I was going to see her again in the my fourth World Championship. So she's my toughest, uh, toughest opponent. So I felt that like, okay, once I beat her, then nothing is in my way. You know? So I was like excited. Mm-hmm. So you travel all the way to Belgium to fight an Indonesian? You can spend like a few hours <laughs> to just fly to Indonesia to fight her. <laughs> I mean, there are, uh, there are other countries, lah, but like, there's because like yeah. Indonesia and Malaysia also came down to Belgium Open. So, <laughs> so is, it like, is it like a tournament? So if it's like one week, you fight every day or something like that, like a knockout? Uh, knockout stage? Yes, ours is a knockout stage. And usually our condition goes uh, maybe like four days max, I would say. Mm-hmm. Depends on how many countries are competing. Yeah? Is I mean, uh, to those of you who don't know, Silat is is an international sport now. There's a lot more countries than uh, the Asian, the original Asian countries that go around competing. Uh, there's also, I mean, there's also competitions in the US and Europe, right? Yes. Now, the only thing that has changed between uh, when I was still around compared to these days is that last time when there was the French Open, the Belgium Open and stuff like that, no other Asian countries could afford to send their athletes over. That's why Singapore won a lot over there. (laughs) But now I think all all the other associations have money, right? Yes. They go to almost every competition that I go to. In the US, in Europe, even in China actually. I went to China in December. So they're still like in China now. <laughs> <laughs> can you so fight? They can actually because I feel like um their new their new like Sila athletes do have martial art background. Mm-hmm. So in some way, okay, their skill isn't as um good as the Asian countries, but I feel like in a few years they will be on par with us. So which countries are actually like the top three powerhouses right now? Indonesia, Vietnam, and then between Thailand or Malaysia. I feel oh, like we're not one. even there. We're not even in the top three. I mean, I mean, <laughs> other than Singapore. <laughs> and all those countries are in the Southeast Asian region. That's why Sea yes, Games exactly. is so high. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, I understand about about Silat being, uh, you know, hard at the Sea Games because of that. But boxing. <laughs> Yeah, we have yeah, Olympians, we have like Thailand, round. Philippines, yes. Vietnam. Okay, okay, you guys are just going to defend each other when it comes to the sea game. But, right? but, I'm, but just, I'm just very curious, like uh, among all the Angmo countries, right? Which one is the best in Silat? I would say... Russian? Um, no. Sorry? Russians? No, actually, I would say... Belgium or yeah, Belgium. Yeah, I think Belgium. They have quite a solid team there, actually. Also, because I think they started before everyone else, right? Yes. In Europe, yeah. And you know the story of why uh, Vietnam became a big powerhouse in Silat. I just this know is... their summit is super powerful. <laughs> <laughs> this is rumors. Until now, you know, until now. <laughs> Until now, their service is super powerful. Yes. I thought they're known. They're more known for their sidekicks. No, they're known for their summit. Sidekick is Indonesia. Right. One. Uh, you can switch off now because you don't. You don't understand all this because you never used your legs before. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Apparently, right from what I heard, right, the reason why Vietnam became very strong, right, was because when they first started the sport, right, they kind of uh entice all the Indonesian coaches with money and women. So they went over to teach yeah. Sila in Vietnam. And then after that, once they started winning, they kind of like send them back to Indonesia. <laughs> really? <laughs> I didn't know that. That's, that's, that was the rumor. I'm not sure whether it's true or not. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, I, I think it's also, I think this is very true for both boxing and Sila, right? For the athletes in 
and I'm not not using this to to kind of label people as lesser of, but in developing nations uh, like Vietnam and and stuff like that, sports is actually one way of them to live a comfortable life, and if they achieve gold medals and stuff like that, they actually get a lot of money and a lot of recognition from their association so that their family can actually like live comfortably. I think that's one of the reasons why in Singapore, it might be a bit hard because we don't have it that hard. You know, I know people in Vietnam, uh, when I used to compete, you know, they literally get uh, more food if they win certain tournaments and stuff like that. So yeah, I think hunger wise and just the literal meaning of fighting to survive yeah. is one of the things that makes, you know, those kind of nations a lot stronger than us. What do you guys think? I mean, I feel like, okay, um, in Singapore, we, okay, before I became a full-time athlete, um, sport is not like the main priority. You still have to do, you still have to study. So... But then I have friends in Indonesia who, who was my age, but they can, like, sport can be their priority. So, like, the school can't touch them if they're representing Indonesia, you know? And their incentives are, like, land, house, lots mm-hmm. of money. Like, I feel like their incentives are way ahead of us. So, yeah, the way they fight is definitely, like, proof that they are fighting for more than us, la, <laughs> Well, what's the what are what are the incentives like for a full time athlete like yourself right now? Singapore, uh, right now since I'm under Sport Singapore's uh, SSI, uh, I get a salary every month. But the only um, competition that I can get money from is Sea Games and Asian Games. So all the other like. Uh, you know, like the Belgium Open, French Open. No, no like bonuses or anything. Right. But I mean, that's already a big weight off your back, right? Because you focus on yeah. trading all the time. You don't have to worry about money. Unlike, you know, one who has to struggle all the time. See what, see what happens when you have a strong association fighting for you. See what happens? Okay. You get to train without worrying about money. <laughs> Like what? What? When when you hear something like this, does it enrage you? Uh, I think no, not really. I think I'm so used to. I think I'm quite used to the struggle, and I don't. And I'm glad that I had to go through that struggle because it sort of built my foundation. It sort of makes me recognize what I am fighting for. It's more than just lands or houses. I mean, it's it's nice to have them. It's nice to be training with a peace of mind. But you know, it's it's not it's not my I'm not, I'm not given that opportunity. Lah. So for me to be fighting right now, is I know it's because I love the sport and I just really want to be the best at it, not just because I want to put food on the table or provide something for my family. And when you talk about hunger, I don't think, um, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's because we are less hungry, that's why we don't win. It's just that we have to balance a lot more. And of course, that's a, a bit of a restriction to achieve excellence or whatever. But it's not impossible. Of course, it takes me a lot, a lot of times, a lot of trials, three bronze medals and whatever. And eventually, I cannot go back to go to sea games because I'm now fighting pro. But it is what it is, sir. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it doesn't make me less hungry. Yeah, but that you're hungry because you don't have money to buy food. Right, one? Yeah, I have. I just want to share with you. Uh. <laughs> We go eat prata, so I pay budo. That's your choice. That's how the rich get richer and the poor get richer. That's how we get richer. Never bring wallet. My wallet got left in my car. My Volkswagen car. I got no money. I need to check my Volkswagen car. You don't need to emphasize on the fact that I drive a Volkswagen. You see, you are kind of good, budo. <laughs> Look, at the at the end of the day, right? I'm I'm not disputing the fact that you guys uh decided to become athletes or fighters, but why I like I was I was in Zilat for uh, maybe ten years and I was in national team for seven years, right? So mm-hmm. I no please. I quit <laughs> I quit when I was uh going to take my A levels. So 
basically my dad told me this. My dad, and actually at the point of time, so we kind of like figured out that maybe I might not go too far in the sport itself. You know, I busted my knee and I might not be the best person out there also. So my dad told me like, uh, man, what are you uh, doing this for? What are you doing silat for? And I tell him, you asked me to start silat when I was eight years old because you say I cannot speak Malay and I was failing Malay in school. So you asked me to join Silat so that I can have Malay friends. Lah. So yeah, my Malay has improved. Uh, but after that, it became a, a sport that I like because I like fighting and I like like I like the fact that uh, my family gets together and you know they watch me fight and just the whole like community spirit in Silat is quite strong, right? Uh, but I also told him like at the end of the day, I I also like the fact that girls look at me differently when I, you know, when I tell them I'm in Sila and I'm in a national team. <laughs> and then no, and then my father, you know what my father said? My father said like, uh, the, 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 girl, the girls part, uh, uh, I want to tell you something. It's like, what? Uh, actually, you don't have to worry about girls. And I say, what do you mean? I don't have to worry about girls. I'm like, 17, my hormones are all over the place. Of course, I have to worry about girls. What? They say, actually, if you study and you make a lot of money, the girls will come. That's like, really? It's like, really? That's like, okay, like, I quit tomorrow. And I concentrate on my studies. And, you know, that's why I have a Volkswagen now. And one doesn't. So. <laughs> yeah, who was crying when they got no job? <laughs> no, no job, but still had a car. <laughs> mm, you're not paying for it. <laughs> but then how's, how's, how's the sea like scene growing? Is it like growing really fast? Like when the local like, competitions is it like a good turnout? Uh, it's definitely growing, I would say, but I think like the local turnout it's kind of the same throughout the years. It's just that like mm. uh, more countries are participating. So we have mm-hmm. more conditions to go to, then we have more support from Sport Singapore. And then yeah, I think I think the huge like difference is I guess the funding that we had mm-hmm. and now we have. Cause we moved from RCC in Badu to Sport Hub. From one arena, we have like four arenas now with like mm-hmm. a gym at the back. So like I, I feel like yeah, the funding was the huge difference for us. But what do you think? When we talk about competitions, you're talking about international tournaments, right? In Singapore. Mm. But do you still uh, have to compete in national? Like just you and other Singaporeans? Yes. Yes, because, you do? Because uh, it's, it's kind of like a requirement under my contract. I guess I still have to bring mm. in the goal <laughs> in the national level before I can compete. But is there even anybody in the scene like, you know, when you see her name in the list, then you be like, oh, I've got to watch out for this one or is it just like, not, not my level even? <laughs> no la, no la. I don't think of it that way because people can surprise you, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is not, this is not, sense. yeah, this is not about arrogance because sometimes you just know, like, you just know you can beat all these asses. <laughs> so there are, there are people just, who can like, even try that. I feel like there's no like name in particular, but mm-hmm. usually when I compete at the uh, nationals, I just try not to get injured. At all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like warm up, just try to get injured during warm ups. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, so Ella, I just I just have another question for you, right? Uh, with regards to competing locally and internationally, I think uh, obviously there's a this when you when you compete locally, obviously you have an advantage because you train every day and and stuff like that, right? But in in what sense does like one say? Do you take it as a warm up, <laughs> or or do you like? you like okay this is just like i i'm taking this seriously i have to win yeah i, I do take it seriously <clears throat> like it's sometimes it's pressurizing because they know you're a full-time athlete so obviously not only that you need to get a goal but you need to perform 
at every round. Like, they expect a performance, you know? So mm. I feel like sometimes there is a pressure, but um, I wouldn't take it as a warm-up, but like as a bench benchmark for myself, I would say. If I feel mm. like, okay, um, uh, a local girl gave me a fight, then it's like a wake-up call to me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you have to do better because you are doing this full-time, you're training every day, but you're, like, someone can give you a fight, then they, I feel like there's something wrong. Lah. So, mm-hmm. it's kind of like a... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, ha- but have you lost a national um, to a local before? I mean, like, a yeah, national tournament? Uh, I think when I was younger, but so far, I... No, so far undefeated, I guess. So far, you're two yes. undefeated. Few years, few years. <laughs> so, few years. Something Last that we don't want to say younger. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, if, now, we understand that you are, you know, right now we're all in this, you know, the circuit breaker thingy, but you are still training twice a day? Yes, I am. <laughs> what, what are you training for? Uh, since, okay, since I, I still do uh, strength training, uh, I brought back some equipment from our training ground. Thank God they let us like bring back some equipment. So I brought like kettlebell, weighted vests, like bands, app rollers and mats and everything. So that one, uh, we do it through like Zoom. We have a trainer from Sport Singapore. And then uh, skills at night uh, with my coach, uh, Mr. Shea, <laughs> through Zoom as well. So, yeah, we still do strength. Uh, we do strength, cardio, and skills uh, still. How much space do you need to do all that? Honestly, okay, I live in a HDB flat, so that's <laughs> not my space. So, some, like, usually my strength training, which requires me to bring, like, bring out equipments, I'll just do it, like, outside where the lift is. Uh, usually, like, there's no one. And then uh, for like skills, I'll, I'll go to the car park rooftop actually. Do you get weird stares from people? Because, you know, Ridwan used to do uh, Instagram <laughs> live of his uh, lunchtime training and then there was a car that went past really? looking at him all weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, uh, there's barely any cars on the rooftop of the car park that I go to. But, but like, you, because it's a lower level that, all the buildings around me so you can see like windows open and like I guess some people are curious lah like what mm-hmm. is this girl doing? <laughs> uh, well, that's, that also trains you for you know fighting in front of people also what? there's more audience also. <laughs> you know, one thing I realised right I mean I mean, I don't follow a lot of Silat players but when I look fighters, at your Silla Instagram fighters, story not players oh sorry sorry fighters. sorry, sorry. Hey, the, the you player you see she she humble same lah it's okay you act fighter everything must be offended <laughs> you know all these like, fighters right you don't see them like posting training videos or something you know like you see in the boxes right they train a bit shadow box a bit they put the phone at the side then they record and they post I don't know for what most of the time. <laughs> oh, you do that too. <laughs> I do it for work because it's business. People like, do like instructional videos and all that. But I mean, like personally, I don't. But you know, like you see, like fighters do that. Why don't you do that? Like you know, you just put your phone aside, do oh 10, 10, 10 push up, then like. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's a good question. Actually, <laughs> because like a lot of people are uh, just like, hey, Sohela, why don't you post? Like, uh, what do you, uh, what you do in training or like one of your workouts? Since like we just want to see, we just want to like you know mm. get tips and everything. But I feel like, I feel like it's so different when there's a camera in front of you when you want to mm. train. I like to be in my mm-hmm. zone mm-hmm. and focus, yeah, and not worry about okay, like there's a camera in front of me. I gotta do something right or like I gotta move a certain way. So I feel like. I don't, yeah, I, I just don't have the, I wouldn't say interest of recording it, but maybe like one day when there is a need to, maybe like mm-hmm. I can, but for now, like my focus is just like, okay, training, not to like, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean like, the, I know that like you're already a world champion and all that, and the first time I see you do exercise is 
um, the burpees for science <laughs> and the thing. That's only time I see you in exercise. Yeah, why did why did you talk? You talk a bit more about yeah. the burpees for science and what is it? What is it about? What is it for? <laughs> okay, so basically, uh. Burpees for Sayang Sayang is to contribute to this uh, Sayang Sayang Fund in Singapore, which helps uh, marginalized companies, companies, sorry, communities uh, <laughs> that's affected that's affected by the COVID situation. Lah. So when uh, when we when we first start, started the circuit breaker, like I think we had so many people tell us like, oh, some people getting pay cuts, some people even losing their jobs and everything. And like, and me, because I'm under a scholarship, there is no pay cut for me. So I felt so, I felt so bad, like, okay, like, I feel, of course, like, fortunate and, like, privileged to be able to still, like, do what I want and, like, get paid. And then, I just decided, like, me uh, and my two teammates, Sheikh Farhan and Sheikh Firaos, I decided, okay, like, is there a way that we can, of course, like, not only, like, donate to a, um, a fund in Singapore but also like to raise awareness for the fund mm. but like since we are athletes like we want also people to get uh, like fit and active with us because like you know being like cooked up at home can be quite mentally challenging draining for some people so we just thought like okay it's a good challenge you know 10 rupees isn't that um tough right <laughs> and yeah and, and since like um since like okay money uh, financial issues uh, I, like it's happening during this period. We just thought, like, okay, just do ten burpees and we will donate uh, donate the amount for you. So in a way, like you are also helping. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how Can much you have you? The objective. Yeah, it's very great. How much have you uh, get it all together for now? Uh, we raised three thousand five hundred and thirty. I think. Congrats! Congrats! Thank you. That's above the that's above the expected one, right? You were yeah, thinking we for wanted- three thousand. Yeah, three thousand only. And and where is where is this money going? Uh to the Sayang Sayang Fund. <laughs> yeah, well you're not you're not Sayang Sayang. <laughs> you're not even <laughs> you're not even they have, like, Sayang. Communities, la. so like yeah. um includes like low income families, uh senior citizens, even like uh, migrant workers. So yeah. Well, pretty much you qualify for it, one. You're a migrant worker sometimes. I was about to say that for you. In, in, in Ramadan, <laughs> you become a Pinoy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? You know, it's pretty well, actually. Yeah, he's a... Uh, That's my he, retirement plan. He used to have a best fighting. friend who was a uh, Pinoy. That's why he is uh, pretty much all Pinoy. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I mean, I think what you're doing for the community is pretty great. Uh but you know the the other thing is also like are you, are you going to continue doing this or is this just going to be you know because you have a bit of spare time uh i guess uh, we we ended our campaign already at the end of circuit breaker but i mean i feel like through that um fundraiser that we did like it exposed me to more campaigns that i actually like uh look into and donate so I guess like it's kind of like I guess we're carrying it on but yeah. maybe who knows in the future we'll do like another fundraiser or something <laughs> maybe in the future when you win SEA Games gold medal <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not making fun I'm just uh, hopelessly <laughs> wishing because okay, it, thank you so <laughs> because it's it's directing me to my next question right uh Obviously, after winning his third bronze medal, one quit amateur boxing and went straight into pro because he knew he could not do it anymore. Uh, so you yourself, you have three bronze medals. Are you still hungry for, you know, another shot at Sea Games? I mean, what keeps you motivated right now? You you're a world champ, uh, which is one of the highest thing that you can win in Zealand, most likely the highest, but. At the same time, Sea Games is more prestigious in a way because all the powerhouses are in Southeast Asia, right? So, yeah. if I'm to if I'm to explain it to the layman who understands football but not Silat, you know, the World Championship is like the Champions League, but the Sea Games is like the World Cup. So you want to win the World Cup and the Champions League at the same time, uh, or one or the other throughout your career. So why don't you tell us like what what keeps you going? 
for now? Um, for now, I still want to get another medal at the World Championships. Not just medal, like <laughs> another goal at the World Championships. So I don't think, yeah, I don't want to stop at just like one gold medal. And SEA Games as well, actually, like, okay, getting three bronzes, it's, it's hard, but at least, like, it tells you, like, okay, you're not going lower than that. So the only way is up. So I just I just feel like, okay, the major games are the one that I'm really, like, just looking forward to and just trying to reach the gold medal every time. So you're, you're pushing yourself forward in that sense, but how do you find motivation to kind of improve? Mm. I feel like actually it's harder to maintain your title than to get there sometimes because uh, I mean to get there you know what to work on um, what your weaknesses are but like once you get there you feel like okay then where do I go from here right once mm-hmm. like I'm at the top but I think like that's that's where like discipline comes into place because I've seen like many complacent athletes you know who just win and then that's it like I don't want I don't want my success to just be like, oh, up, and then, like, I'm done. (laughs) I want it to just continue and then hopefully, like, build uh, a better platform, bigger platform for me to... Because I feel like um, being an athlete, uh, gold medal is not the only thing that I want. I feel like through my sport, I want to bring, like, communities together, more people together, build a bigger platform. And then, like, not only can I share my passion for Silat or anything else, but, like, I feel like through that platform, I'll get, like, a voice to um, talk about better things that matter. Lah. So, it's not only what do you love, for me. What do you love about Silat so much? Kicking people? Silat. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I like, of course, I like the art of it. Uh, my culture. <laughs> And like, I like the adrenaline actually when you're in the arena. Yeah, I think it's very appropriate how we have you on and we have a Silat fighter on when, you know, culture is playing. Culture and race is kind of the hot topic <laughs> these days, right? Oh, uh, yes. So definitely, I think it's, 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 uh, it's good that you're proud of, you know, the culture itself and, and representing it. And I think it's kind of cool that you're also... Uh, Sorry, you know, <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> is she is she angry that we're keeping you up at <laughs> night or what? No, 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 no. she's just <laughs> calling for me. I'm like, my hands are just like. Kau dah busy kau simpan makanan di fridge. Ini pinggan kenapa tak basuh ni dah makan cherry. Kau nak kumik kau ah? Kau makan tak tepi, makan tak tepi. All right, okay, hang on, on that. On on that note, we're going. We're, we've reached thirty minutes. We're just gonna play a little game. No, it's not really a game, but we're just gonna. We have this segment we call Quick Jets, where we talk about. Uh, we ask you questions about non, fight sport things. Not as if we haven't been talking about fight sports, anyways. Uh, <laughs> and you give us one word answers, okay? Okay. So we're gonna give you five questions. You give us one word answers, and I'm gonna start. Are you yeah, ready? One word answers or one sentence maximum. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you prefer clean shaven guys like Juan or guys with facial hair like me? Clean shaven. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, Juan, you go. What's your favorite movie of all time? Southpaw or Creed? Serious, boxing movie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, if you can choose to live in another country in this world, which country would that be? Bali. <laughs> okay, so <new. laughs> Okay, complete the sentence. Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> okay. Why? Why? I mean, Bali's not bad. It's just yeah, that you guys go yeah. workshop for earthquake and volcanoes. I mean, like, the country that I really want to re- visit is Greece. I feel like that is a good holiday destination. I don't know if the life there is good, so that's a tough question. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think <laughs> Greece is not the place you want to settle down. <laughs> yeah. Just go actually, to Thailand, actually, uh, Australia, Australia, Australia. Australia. <laughs> Australia, okay. Is that the final answer? 
Yes, Australia. Oh my gosh, we cannot do this with girls. They cannot make up their mind, one. <laughs> which, which part of Australia? I'm very indecisive. Uh, oh, wow. Brisbane. I don't know. My grandparents are in Brisbane, so I don't know. Uh. Okay, we've got we've we've gone more than one away right now. One you <laughs> said to us that question. Okay, fill in the blank. Taylor Swift is cool. <laughs> <laughs> My God, just so saying that makes it. Cool. <laughs> I listen to Taylor Swift yeah. My sister, yeah, my sister loves Taylor Swift And I like her But she's not my favourite That's all so She's, she's so thick right now Wow, what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> now I watched a documentary And I realised that She's actually like uh, Bigger than What I thought she would be Oh Especially on the lower half Of her body But that's another story For another time kids You're so mean <laughs> Yeah Adip's question What's Adip's question Okay Adip's question is Nasi lama or nasi ayam Nasi lama But yay <laughs> But I feel like nasi ayam <laughs> Wait wait nasi, Wait 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 Nasi lama with fried chicken Fried fish Or fish cake Or ota What Cutlet. Fried chicken. Cutlet or fried? Yes, chicken cutlet. <laughs> yes. Senang nak go, tak nak go be-go-be. I'm not fan of fish lah. Before we uh, go on to more fishy stuff, uh, do you need to go and wash your dishes for your mom or no? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Right now, usually... Usually, for the second half of the podcast, we talk more about the life side of stuff for our fighters than, you know, fighting itself. Uh, we've been all over the place for this podcast, so we must well just continue. <laughs> you are actually not only a world champion Silat fighter, but you are also, I think you are one of the first, if not the only uh, person with more than... 30,000 followers on Instagram <laughs> in the sea light circles. Uh, so, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure how you look at the term influencer, but it seems like that's the direction that we're trying to go at. Uh, what do you feel about that tag being on, on, on you? I, I actually don't like being called an influencer because I feel like I am an athlete first. And also, like, Influencer like carries like a heavy responsibility. Like what? Is it self herbal tea? No, no, no. Like I feel like once you have a platform, you have an audience, so you have to really be careful of what you say, what you do, actually outside even, and like what you share with the world. Uh, so. so you don't you don't you don't see yourself as that, but apparently I think a lot of people do. Does it does it ever come in conflict with you know maybe you just want people to know that you're an athlete out there and like you know they're still like pestering you like hey can you model this for me can you sell my steaming <laughs> tea you know and stuff like that actually yes like um my Instagram before okay before the uh, business before I changed my business account into my job title into athlete I actually didn't put any like uh title. I guess and sometimes when I get invited to events um, my label was actually uh, Nurul Suhaila beauty influencer or like beauty blogger or something like that I remembered I saw one of them and then I got so like eh I'm not like a beauty blogger you know so I just felt like okay and then like some companies that approach me um, think that that I'm a full-time influencer so like I have all the time in the world to like you know, like create content. Influence. <laughs> create content. I'll say create content. And then when I tell them like, oh, okay, um, I can't meet this deadline because uh, I have a competition or like I have training, then they'll just like, oh, oh, you do have a job. Like <laughs> you do have a full-time job. So <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I, then I decided, you know what? I really need to just like make it known that I'm an athlete first before I go into that like beauty world or anything else yeah so I just put it as athlete first yeah so I mean, if you've got a potential client I mean a brand to get you to promote their product for like maybe five thousand to ten thousand dollars then you try it out and you don't really like it would you say do it no really I feel like 
Yes. No, because um, I just feel like okay. Um, okay, I I would understand it if it uh if it's coming from like a full time influencer because that is the main source of income, you know. Mm. But for me, like my platform, I really I really feel like money is not my number one goal. I just like I just enjoy having a platform where I can really like share my passion, my interest, and anything that I want to share online. So. Like since like I already have a job, um, I don't want to promote something that is not like authentic to me or not something that I believe in, because it still it does affect my title as an athlete as well. So I feel like yeah, on, usually on my platform I really just try to say stay as true to myself as possible, even if money is involved, because I don't want to. Yeah, it, it's very hard when people question your credibility or like yeah. um, your authenticity yeah so i really just try to stick to if i like it i'll tell you i like it if i don't then i'll just like nicely tell the company like oh it didn't work out for me so can i uh since i use it i'll pay for it or like can i send it back then other than that is yeah it's pretty straightforward for me that's a pretty good business sense to have but has as uh any of your coaches or anything ever tell you like, hey, you need to like calm down with all the Instagram stuff and like focus on training? Has there ever been <laughs> no. an intervention like that? No, actually, because um, I feel like even some of my friends are more active online than I am. Because, um, okay, when, when it's not circuit breaker, when you see like me in training, like my friends all know that I usually, I'm like, interaction on my social media is so minimal and so like I can even like ghost my friend for like few days <laughs> because like okay when I'm training I'm training and if I'm tired I, I don't wish to like do uh, any engagement on it or anything because like uh, last time I used to try to juggle both of them like right after training like I'll walk into my training ground with um, my clothes my makeup uh, hair color my shoes just to go to like uh, an event after training so I have to get ready in my training ground <laughs> and with like my bag and like all my sweaty clothes in, in my bag so it's like it was really hard for me so I decided like you know okay that needs to stop like like I really just need to prioritize training if it like if it's convenient then I'll attend events and like do brand engagements or anything yeah one are you taking notes because you know this is how uh, a person with 300 thousand followers do it and you <laughs> cannot put down your phone even though you have less it than that so you see train when you send to train you train okay you don't know how to freestyle what to use the gravel when you start to train you listen, bro don't be so bad like that because i don't reply your thanks <laughs> <laughs> yeah when when you know when i have my phone all the time with me and you don't get a reply it only means i don't want to reply <laughs> <laughs> look, look, you see, Suhaila doesn't, like, she's so focused on training that she goes her friends for a few days. When Ridwan doesn't reply to me and goes me, you know that he recently just lost. That's why. That's no, the that's only thing. <laughs> Whenever he is defeated, whenever he has a loss, he'll ghost everyone because he's upset. Yeah, <laughs> that's, only, like, that's, I, I that's only once. Like you When you know me, I only <laughs> lost once. Twice. <laughs> Uh, you've lost twice. <laughs> no, once. Yeah, twice. It's not like you were there anyway. Like Sorry? Yeah, but for me... <laughs> right, it's quite tiring, right? But so you get a lot of messages. Uh. Mm. Do you reply to them like one by one? I, I really do try to. But sometimes like if it's necessary then I but if not, like, it's just too, it's too many messages now, so I can't, just never I click. can't keep up sometimes. <laughs> I, I guess it's, it's quite, it's quite a responsibility, right? Because you have friends, not only in the Silat circles, but you know, you're quite well known outside the Silat circles. So I would reckon there's a lot of people that care for you. And when you do lose or when you don't do as well, there's going to be a flood load of messages. How does, how do you even yeah. cope? Honestly, I do not like. I will. That's why the thing about me, right? I'm I'm such a bad texter because I feel like. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason why we're calling you. Is. 
<laughs> my friends know this like it takes me a while to reply to a text message because like okay not only am I getting like like I get I know I'm sorry I'm getting one from you but I'm also getting a few from other people and I don't like like replying text when I'm doing something because I feel like okay when I want to reply you I want to give you my full attention and like my full um reply right so I have to like wait until I'm okay I my day is done I have nothing else to do so okay let's go through my phone and reply oh nice I think it's gonna be my mentality from now yeah but <laughs> the, the only problem is that you got so no one else texting you you gotta wait for two more years before I reply your next text <laughs> sure I guess we're not doing this show anymore then after this <laughs> I will just automatically show up on Saturday night if we saw it so like, it's not, it's not. So Ayla, you are an influencer. See how you're influencing him right now? <laughs> Why did we even get her on the show again, guys? <laughs> I'm kidding. Look, what's what's next for you right now? Uh you've you've talked about wanting to win more. So it seems like you still want to be in the sport. But at the same time, <laughs> you also do talk about building a platform for yourself. You have this whole other thing that you have outside of the Silat Circle itself. Uh, how long do you think you, you know, continue to do it? Because, you know, just like every other spot, fight sport, the thing with Silat is most of it is, it's depending on your reaction and also your fast twitch muscles, mm. right? Uh, the mental aspect of it and stuff like that, yes, there is also like every other fight sport there is. But the lifespan of a Sila fighter that does not really go on beyond 30. Unless you're I, a guy. I, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 it's not just unless you're a guy, unless you're a guy and unless you're fighting in the heavyweight divisions because you don't have much as much competition. This is what people don't know, right? Uh which is true from my time. I don't know whether it is now, but the lower, the lighter weight classes are more competitive because there's more people and the heavier weight classes are not as competitive because there's not much people because in Asia, not everyone can afford to buy food. Correct or not? That's true. <laughs> no, but it's true. You can never find, for last time, right? You can never find hip, heavyweight categories from Indonesia, from Laos, from maybe even Vietnam because they just don't have people that big. Is there so some big people, these big people who win just happen to be swimming in the finals? Huh? No, I'm not talk- I'm not <laughs> saying that one stop instigating some, but you know, a lot of world champions from Singapore did come in weight, heavyweight classes. I'm <laughs> just saying. What do you think, Zai? Like, am I am I right or am I right? Uh, <laughs> <wait. laughs> I think like right now, like of course I do like realize that maybe like during your time, probably I'm not <laughs> sure. During your time. <laughs> your time. I'm getting used to hearing that these days. <laughs> but like for me now, I feel like I feel like most of the class are full when I compete overseas actually so like not I say I wouldn't say it's much of a difference between hmm like okay some um some competitions they do open like uh heavy than usual classes that's when like the athletes or like the opponents get lesser but I feel like my team, we don't we we don't have a lot who's in the heavy weight class as well. Anyway, so I feel like I'm more exposed to like people who are. I think I feel like I'm in the middle though. Like mm-hmm. I'm not light or I'm not heavy, so I I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, but but the question was the the initial question was uh how long more do you think you're going to do this? Oh okay, yeah, that's the initial question. <laughs> we sidetracked feel... as usual because we might... yeah we did. <laughs> uh, I feel like as long as I can if can my I have no plans on getting married <laughs> anytime soon so I feel like yeah as long as I can maybe like when I do start a family then probably it's time to stop lah. but it's not that, that's not anytime soon for me so. alright 
but I mean, it's, I think it's also about whether your body can still take it, right? Yeah. But I feel like it's not impossible though. In, in Indonesia, like we have seen like, uh, you know, the Ganda category, uh, mm. the, the, what, the choreographed The doubles, fight. yeah. Yeah, they have like moms competing in it and they are so good. They even, they're even training when they are pregnant. So like, for me, it's not, it's like, it's not, it's hard, but it's not impossible. The thought of people training while they are pregnant kind of like, irks me a bit. You might see you of yourself when you're are. training. <laughs> Pretty much when I do train, when I eventually will train, not sure when the day is, I think I can, people might think I'm pregnant also. <laughs> not think we all know. What, what, if, have you ever given the thought about, you know, in the event where you finally do decide to quit the sport, what do you, what would you like to do? I mean, I asked Ridwan this and the reason why he moved you know, very close to IMH is because he wants to go there straight away after his boxing career, you know, to fix his brains. <laughs> but what about you? What Have you ever given a thought about what you're going to do after Silat? Of course, like, I've, I've thought about it, but I can't, like, I can't put a finger on what I really want to do, to be honest. I feel like, I don't know, once you're an athlete, right, you will end up somewhere on that line. Like you can't get out of the athlete life. So, hmm. I'll see where the future takes me. La. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I see. Well, I think that's good news for, for everybody who's interested in Silat and everybody who's a fan of you because it seems like the thoughts of retirement is quite far away. Yeah. So that's pretty good, right? <laughs> I mean, a few more SEA Games and hopefully no bronze medals. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, before well, we're going, we've been going on for a bit now. Before we wrap things up, uh, you know, you're you're not only an athlete. In in the the thing is, a lot of people who come on show are actually inspirational people, and it might not look like it when we talk about it, but uh, you know, <laughs> people who are invited on our show are actually people who, to a certain extent, have you know. Uh, motivated or inspire other people to pick up their sport and stuff like that. So I think one of the th reasons why we we try to get you on is because not only are you a female athlete, you're a world champion and stuff like that, but I think you also kind of have a feminist side to you where you want to prove people that girls can fight <laughs> as hard as boys. I mean, I don't know. That's what I read in the newspapers and, you know, it's supposed <laughs> to believe in whatever are in the newspapers, right? Uh, what, what feels that? I, do you still, do you still stand for that and stuff like that? Of course, like, of course, like I am still on the same page, right? But I, I feel like I'm not trying to prove anything. I feel like, when I started the sport, I am this way already. But I, I feel like um, I'm a different person in the arena and out. And um, I guess to encourage girls to, you know, because most people like, most people expect um, girls to look a certain way can only mm. achieve a certain uh, stage of success in sport. But like, I feel like, you know, it's so different. It, me in the arena, me outside is so different. And it doesn't, like, how I look doesn't affect how I fight. Although I've gotten a lot of comments about it. <laughs> like, oh, you don't look like a fighter. You don't look strong enough. You don't look fierce enough. But I feel like, okay, then I'll just prove to you if what I can achieve then, you know? Because, like, Silat is not the only thing I'm interested in. Like, I like fashion, I like makeup. So, like, I feel like as professional athletes, we want the best of everything. So, we just try to achieve the best of everything that we like. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like my, my look doesn't, like, affect how I fight. Doesn't, like, prove anything, lah. I think, yeah, you you are exactly the opposite of what Ridwan is, right? Like, you don't have to look like Ridwan that ugly to you, to be a boxing champ. You can actually look quite pretty. Wow, like, you know, 
and yeah, also be a world champ. You know, you don't have to be ugly <laughs> to be a good athlete. Uh, yeah, I think definitely you've you've hit the nail right on. Right, uh, you hit it right on the nail there when you say that. You know, I think one of the things that you stand for is also like you know you can be two different. You can be many different things and excel at every single thing that you want to be, as long as you're comfortable in your own skin, right? I mean, yeah. if, like you say, you're you're like this even before you know all the silat fame and stuff like that. Now, if there's any girl out there or you know anyone out there who is listening and and you know you want to give them a word of advice if they say that they want to be like you and stuff like that, what would you say to them? Of course, you know nothing is impossible. If you have a dream, chase it no matter what people say firstly believe in yourself because no one can believe in you unless you firstly believe in yourself and if someone tells you you can't be something then literally be the best at it <laughs> that's nice that's something that I don't think we've heard before <laughs> uh, I was you- like in that position so like <laughs> look at me now <laughs> nice all right i just a big thank you for coming on the show so i i think a lot of us could pick up a thing or two about you know how you conduct yourself in and out of the ring uh you know especially one one can pick out how not to text people and how to like maybe grow his social following which you know try <laughs> just try not to be as ugly as he is right now Oh my god. <laughs> no one can they have an ugly heart. Where, <laughs> <laughs> where, where? Sorry. Now we've gone on for way, way too long. So I like uh, again, thank you so much. I think uh it's inspiring what, what you've you've uh, achieved in this sport of Silat itself. Thank and you. you know, you're you're actually one of the you're you're the first person that I've ever seen that has transcended the sport into something yeah. that it's not Thank like you. certain when I when it was my time, uh she like <laughs> girls look a certain way and uh yeah, not a lot of people got involved with see like girls, you know what I mean? <laughs> we kind of like stayed away a bit. Not to say that they're ugly, not to say that they're ugly, right? Just you know, it's just not up to the time sometimes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, to the I, time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean Thank you so much for showing uh, girls the way that they can be a Sila athlete, a uh, Sila fighter, and also be kind of good looking. You know, uh, I think a lot of guys, a lot of guys would like to thank you also for doing that for all of us. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, but I mean, most importantly, uh, thank you for making Singapore proud with your achievements. Uh, proving that we can be fighters where we want to be, and uh, you know, we can be good at sports when we want to be. So I hope you continue to fight on and eventually get that SEA Games gold medal and yeah, come back, go come back to the show when that happens so that we can both win my medal. Are better, <laughs> yeah. are better than one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just, just a quick, uh, just a quick wrap up. Do you want to sh- throw out any, you know, thank you notes or where people can find you on Instagram and stuff like that? Uh, thank you of course to firstly my family for molding me into the person that I am today not forgetting my Peguruan Sinning Pupulan and then Singapore Silat Federation and I think the biggest one uh, SSI as well for really um, turning me professional and giving me so much support that I got the title a dream that I've been like working to it since I was 10 years old so um, you can find me on Instagram Nurul Suhaila that's where I'm most active on <laughs> okay brilliant one quick shout out from you uh, just look for me at tcw.legends don't look for me in my house too many people in my house really <laughs> <laughs> too famous <laughs> uh, okay Brilliant. Uh, we're just going to wrap this up. Uh, so, Ella, again, thank you very much for coming on the One Man Show. We are the number one fight podcast, the only fight podcast in <laughs> Singapore. And uh, just a, a big shout out. We have uh, we, 
we've gone beyond 5k in views and listens Ooh. so pretty cool thank you so much for your support everyone and uh, as usual in this trying times thank you to all our frontline workers everybody who is out there trying to get rid of this whole covid situation uh hopefully we all can get back out there soon so Ayla can go back to train one can go back to train yes. and the show can go back to the couch so yeah <laughs> catch us on instagram facebook youtube and spotify, spotify. of course this is the one man show we're signing out with Norsu Nor Suhaila bye bye before we uh, go on to more fishy stuff uh, do you need to go and wash your dishes for your mom or no no <laughs> no <laughs>